Welcome. It is Trinity Sunday. God three in one. The Father who sent the Son, the Son who sends us, and the Father and Son who send the Spirit to each one of us. Let's be still as we prepare to worship Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's praise our God together. come now to our prayers of penitence. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by his Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all bitterness, all slander, all malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. A few moments to reflect personally. We pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. 
we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew your right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be glory and praise forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So we come now to Scripture. We come to our psalm, Psalm 8. And as always with this psalm and the following Scriptures, we are opening our ears to hear God's Word and yielding to His will once again. Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We now listen to our words from Romans chapter 5. The reading is taken out of Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Suffered and crucified 
Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. Gospel reading now from John chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said to his disciples, All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first, because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the Prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we say together our canticle, a song of God's children. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. All who are led by the spirit of God are children of God, for we have received the spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness that we are children of God, and if God's children, then heirs of God. If heirs of God, then fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him now, that we may be glorified with him. These sufferings that we now endure are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We now welcome uh, Peter Gillies, who preaches at All Saints, as he brings us the sermon for today. Let us pray. Father, may the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts conform to your will and to your word. In Christ's name, amen. This is a sermon on the Trinity, the tri-unity, and I want to come out of the gates right with a very clear monotheistic statement from Isaiah. 
I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. Well, if God doesn't know about any other gods, then there probably aren't any out there. But I open with Christian. What do you believe? Well, we believe God is important. Uh, and we believe the Trinity is important. And then the, the church has come up with 150 different creeds and, and confessions, the Apostles' Creed, the Creed of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed. Yes, they're different. Um, the Chalcedonian Creed, the Athanasian Creed. Um, when I asked my neighbor uh, how she looked at the Trinity, she came with a, well, you know, I, it's one God and three persons in, in, in one God. And I was like, okay, that's good. <laughs> you know, uh, that's correct. But why is that correct? And, and where have we come from? And where do we get that anyway? You know, we're supposed to be workmen in, in, the, in the scripture. So the Trinity is a target in, in, in these days. Uh, and it's a, it's a target from everyone. I'd say especially uh, from, from, from Islam, uh, Islam being a kind of Christian cult, and they sort of agree with us on everything, like the virgin birth and Jesus, and except the things that really matter, like the resurrection and, and the Trinity and, and, and that kind of thing. And because of this, you really need, I need, we need to understand the core doctrines of Christianity because it's our job to take it out there and give it to the rest of the world. So they're better at, atta at, at attacking the Trinity, I would say, than we are at defending it. So let's get better at uh, a little bit of defense. So, Christian, what do you believe about the Trinity. It's easy to get it wrong. We have things like modalism. If you've ever used the, oh kids, uh, the Trinity is like an egg. You have that shell and you have the, the white and then you have the yolk. Yeah, I can understand why you use it for kids, but that's actually kind of modalism or Sabellianism or tritheism or Apollinarianism or Arianism or Docetism. Um, that's Jesus was a hologram. Yeah. Uh, Macedonianism, adoptionism, and partialism. The three, the three are each one third God. Uh, and each of these heresies was not made by, you know, stupid or crazy people. But who cares? You know, I mean, they're, they're close enough, right? The egg idea or the fire idea, you know, you put one match to the next and then the fire doesn't actually diminish here, but it's the same fire. You know, um, isn't this just nitpicking? Well, no, actually it isn't. Um, your belief in Christ actually hangs uh, on the Trinity. How else would you find, find your salvation in him? 68% of evangelicals do not believe, not just people, and this is from the United States, not just people, evangelicals do not believe that Jesus was God. Are they saved? Well, no. You know, uh, 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 if Jesus isn't God, then his, his sacrifice for us isn't enough. And if he didn't, isn't God and didn't rise from the dead, then, you know, as Paul said, we are the most miserable of men. So we really need to understand and believe that Jesus is God. The Father is God and the Spirit is God. Otherwise, our, the whole edifice of our faith starts to wobble. The Bible doesn't give us a whole lot of information. It's a lot of sort of bits and pieces that you put together, but there are very few places I could say, oh, that's a good place to go to see the, 
the whole picture. Maybe in Matthew we'll, we'll get to that. <clears throat> so the more I talk about it and the more anyone talks about it, it seems like we're using human words and getting it ever tighter and ever better, the worse it gets. But suffice it to say that there are three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they are united in one God. There's one what and three who's. The three who's, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are the unity of God. And I should probably just stop right there. But I will use Dr. James White and in his book, The Forgotten Trinity, uh, a quote from him. He says, within the one being, God, that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal, co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, let's, let's first look in the Old Testament where we could see evidence for this, uh, and, and of course with the benefit of hindsight, and then we'll look into the New Testament to see uh, what kind of information is laying, down and, uh, laying around and try to pull that together. So if we, if we go to the, uh, uh, to the Old Testament, we can find evidence pretty clearly of you know, the, the Holy Spirit, uh, certainly of God the Father, um, and God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, maybe uh, is more challenging. So we'll, we'll start with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit participated in creation, that's Genesis 1-2. The Holy Spirit came upon judges and warriors and prophets and gave them insight and strength. The Spirit played a prominent role in Old Testament prophecy, which is extremely important for uh, Christ, of course. Um, David declared, the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. So the Spirit is clearly there. The Father is clearly there. This is probably the least contentious uh, of all of these. Um, at, uh, the, the, the God is referred to as the Father. Um, uh, many passages here. Let's just take one. For you are our Father. This is Isaiah 63. Although Abraham uh, does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge you, you, O Lord, are, are our Father, our Redeemer. Uh, from old is your name. So, we have the Spirit, we have the, we have the Father, and we have the Son in the form of, for example, the angel of the Lord. And in this uh, passage here, we see, well, the angel of the Lord has the uh, power to forgive sins. So that's Exodus 23. God says, do not rebel against him, the angel of the Lord leading them out of Egypt. Um, he will not forgive your rebellion since my name is in him. So there's a, an aspect of forgiveness in this, uh, in this person. There's a distinction uh, also between the Lord in heaven, I'm oh, sorry, the Lord in heaven and the Lord uh, on the earth. Um, uh, this is then the story of Lot and, and his family and Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So there are two lords here. It's one of the same, kind of the same thing happens in Psalm 110 of David. Uh, the Lord, Jehovah, says to my Lord, Adonai, uh, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. So the Lord says to my Lord, um, and so, you know, this is, this is well known in, in, in Jewish rabbinical, rabbinic literature that, you know, there was, this, uh, there was always uh, this kind of idea of, 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 of uh, maybe a composite uh, God that they were referred to as powers. Well, that's the Old Testament. We can see that, certainly with the help of hindsight, we can go back and we can see, you know, we can see the, 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 the members, the persons of the Trinity. Uh, but in the, Old, in the New Testament, even though we have a lot more of this, we also get some problems. Um, and uh, 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 not everything is solved once we get to the New Testament. Uh, there are New Testament texts that kind of confuse people. 
And sometimes we've got to go, you know, back to the Greek. Uh, for example, John 14, 28, Jesus says, The Father is greater than I. Oh, dear. Um, but in this verse, the being is the same. That's God. The Father is God. The Son is God. Uh, but the Father's role is greater. And because we see here levels of submission within the Godhead, um, as we also see uh, in, um, in marriage between a man and a woman, the two become one, uh, uh, but retain their personhood, although the husband is the head of the wife. There's a, a willing submission uh, within uh, marriage. Genesis 2, 24 says the two will become one flesh. Yeah? So we see, we see this also in, uh, in, in, in the Godhead. One, one concept that helped me sort of get a little bit deeper into the, um, into the uh, uh, Trinity, it was, you know, you've got this, this triangle with God in the middle. And so the Father is God and isn't the Son and isn't the Holy Spirit. And it goes all the way around like that. But Bishop Burton, who is an Episcopal bishop in Lexington, Kentucky, said, the Father is not the true God without the Son and without the Holy Spirit. So it's not just the Father is God and isn't the Son and isn't the Holy Spirit, but isn't God without them. Yeah, and so you know you can see it's, a, it's just a total reliance within the what the one being these three persons are so uh, so very intertwined. Even the study of uh, if you want to do a study of who raised Christ, because you have verses that say the Father did it, the Son did it, and the Holy Spirit did it. Aren't those contradictions? And no, they aren't because of the the total intertwining. Uh, it's, it's a great little little study to do, about 15 places where you have to look and, and put a puzzle it together. So I'd like to say four things here. One thing is the Father is not the Son. Sometimes those two get stuck together. Um, this is Matthew 3, uh, 16. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. The heavens were open to him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. So this is one entity. This is one person saying to another person, uh, I am well pleased with uh, you. So there's a, it's clear that the personage is different. The second thing is that Jesus is, is, is indeed God. Colossians 2 says, For in Christ all the fullness, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. How is that? And no wonder it's so hard to make a creed. But, but we can believe that. We can, we can understand it. We can believe it. But sometimes putting it down into precise words without losing anything of it is so hard to do. Jesus claimed to be God. Jesus is God. Titus, Titus 2, 11 to 13 says, We should live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Unitarians get very sidetracked here, and they say, No, no, no. It's of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So Jesus is a Savior, but he's not God. Oh dear, okay. But there's a, there's a very clear Greek law here, and um, always those two things, those two aspects in front of a, a, a proper name like that will always, both of them will always refer to that name. And we also see this in the beginning of uh, 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 1, the same kind of phrasing, great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's both of those are referring to him. We're not splitting them. And the fourth thing is that Jesus calls himself God. You know, um, very often, you know, why, why didn't Jesus say he was God? You know, well, he did. 
He just didn't use those English words. But I mean, why do you think they crucified him? Um, Very truly, I tell you, he says in John 8, uh, before Abraham was born, I am. This is the great ego ami. Bad grammar, unless you're God. But, uh, you know, he was quoting from uh, Isaiah 43 and what Yahweh said about uh, uh, himself. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am. Uh, this is the great title of I am. They mess it up in the, in the NIV. They put I am he to kind of make it more English. But that takes away the, the clarity of the title. He is the great I am. John 13 says, I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am, but the who I am isn't in there, that I am. Here's again that, that title coming out. God, Jesus saying, I'm God, I'm this guy, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. That's um, uh, Revelation 22, 12. And of course, uh, the opening to the Gospel of John 1, where the Word was with God and the Word was God. So the Bible sort of forces this idea. You almost can't get around uh, the Trinity um, uh, if you really stick with what the Bible says. Finally, the Holy Spirit is also uh, God. Very, not very much preached about the Holy Spirit. Um, some, a, a slightly neglected person of, of, uh, of the Trinity. But if we look at Acts 5, we see that Ananias and Sapphira, they, they had some land, they were going to sell it, so they had all things in common, they sold it. And they held back some of the money, even though they said that they didn't. Uh, and Peter comes up and says to Ananias, you know, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? In verse 3, and then verse 4, he says, you have lied to God. And then, you know, it didn't end well for poor old Ananias. Um, the question of, is the Spirit personal? Well, we look in Acts 13, and it says the Holy Spirit uh, said, set apart for me uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Well, he's giving commands. He's setting people aside for work that he has for them to do. Uh, that sounds pretty personal. Um, uh, Acts 10, while Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So here again is the Holy Spirit is calling people and sending people and giving messages. Matthew 3 um, says the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. Ephesians 4 says, do not grieve the Spirit of God. Uh, Hebrews 10 says you can insult the Holy Spirit. Well, you can't insult electricity. You, know, you can't insult cement. Uh, you can insult a person. And, and certainly the Holy Spirit is a person. And of course, then nicely in Matthew 28, 19, you see, you know, go to all the nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that does kind of bring them, it's one place where it kind of brings them all nicely together. So I'm back to my beginning. Christian, what do you believe? Because if you believe, as many evangelicals do, that Jesus was not, that Christ was not God, then your salvation is, is full of holes. The, the wrong person tried to pay for your sins, kind of like Adam in the Garden with Eve. The wrong person was trying to fix it. But if you've got the Trinity and you've got God the Father, fully God, and you've got God the Holy Spirit with the fullness in Him of the Godhead. And you've got uh, uh, Christ and the whole fullness of the Godhead, the whole fullness of deity within uh, Him. You've got those three and it was Christ on the, on the cross that died for you and, and covered, your, covered your sins and then rose again so that we would not be the most miserable of all people, because if he didn't, we are. Uh, that is a key to 
the Christian faith and a key of the message as you take it out to uh, the rest of the world. So we are asked to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ. We are asked to study, to show ourselves approved to God, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, rightly handling the word of truth. And you and I too need to understand because we are asked to bring our message of God to others. Let us pray. Father, we rejoice in the truth of the Trinity. We rejoice in what your word allows us to see. Help us to grow in discipline, in courage, and in knowledge so that we can bring the truth to a world that desperately needs it. Thank you for your Son, fully man and fully God, who died and rose for us and for our salvation. May we proclaim his truth boldly, and it is in his holy name that we pray. Amen. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. I know the blessings give my spirit voice tender to me. And so we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we are now led in our intercessions. Today, it's Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is a Christian festival 
widely celebrated by Western churches. It falls every year on the first Sunday after Pentecost, the 50th day after Easter. Trinity Sunday in its essence celebrates the mystery of faith and the unity of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to our God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, be near to the people of this world who are formed in your image. Be close to the world your love brings life to. We remember all who bear the responsibility of leadership. We want to pray for the heads of states and for governments. Let your will for our world be accomplished through the decisions that they make and give them a vision of peace and reconciliation for you, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One God, three persons, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near, near to them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. And above all, we pray for all of your people, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One God, three persons, we pray for your church worldwide, for all bishops, in particular our bishops Robert and David. We pray for Pope Francis, for the patriarchs of the Orthodox churches, and the leaders of various evangelical and Protestant denominations. Give grace to our minister, grant, and to all your ministers, that they may testify of your gospel in word and deed. Make us one in body and mind, worldwide, but also here in our congregation in Amersfoort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One God, three persons, help us to be gentle with others, but also with ourselves. Give us the calm that, calm that makes for consideration and respect for others. Take from us hard words and a cynical look. Let us be to others as we would wish them to be to us when we fail. Forgive us when we fail, and when others fail us, then please heal us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One God, three persons, Comfort through your Holy Spirit all who are in sorrow or need, in sickness or in hardship. Be close to those who are near to death. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and mourning, and give us all a real sense of your love as you draw uh, all who suffer into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One God, three persons, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on this earth, be with us, and with those that we love, and with those whom we love and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have recently passed away, and those mourning their passing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. One God, three persons, we ask you to lead us in the coming week. Help us to believe that you are close to us. Keep us from making mistakes and help us to serve you and the people we meet. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we come to our closing prayers, we have the prayer set for this Trinity Sunday as well as two prayers for Queen Elizabeth II, as this weekend is Queen Elizabeth's official birthday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reign of your servant, Queen Elizabeth II, and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, the way, the truth, and the life, we give you thanks for your servant, Queen Elizabeth. May she ever be provided with all she may need for her ministry, strengthened to meet every demand which her office may make, and in all things nourished by your word and example. In the name of him who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come to our notices. Uh, this coming Tuesday, the Parenting Teenagers course uh, begins. It'll be run online, uh, five practical sessions with a mixture of video input and sharing, intended for parents of children uh, aged 11 to 18. Uh, speak to uh, Yolanda uh, to know more or to join in. Coming Saturday, 18th of June, a men's group meeting at Peter Gillies' home in Nykerk begins with a barbecue at 6 p.m followed by time exploring Paul's four missionary journeys. Uh, all welcome uh, this coming Saturday. And finally, throughout the year, we normally focus two Sundays uh, upon persecuted Christians. Uh, next Sunday, uh, 19th of June, will be our Sunday, uh, the first of our two Sundays when we focus upon the persecuted church. The second Sunday uh, will, of course, as normal, be in November. And so, we sing together our closing hymn. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, Strong deliver, beginning and end. All within me falls at your throne. Your majesty.
we end with a blessing for this Trinity Sunday. God the Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the beloved Son, bless you. God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, bless you. God the Holy Spirit, who sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts, bless you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today, now and always. Amen. We close by praying together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.